How can Trump be against Elon Musk and Tesla? See, a lot of you guys are getting things confused in the marketplace. I heard a bunch of people talking smack upon Elon and saying that Trump is against Tesla. Look, 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 look. Calm down on the calm down. Trump is against the mandates, demanding people, enforcing people to choose EV. He's for free market, and he's definitely for Elon because Elon is a free market participant. He's an innovator. See, Elon wants a free market. He's not against it. And most normies be like, well, that's going to destroy Tesla because if they're not forced, they're not going to sell cars. No, we're going to sell cars. You don't, you don't need to force people to buy the iPhone because the iPhone is doing what it does. <laughs> See, the iPhone is still going to sell required to be a mandate or not, it's still going to sell, just like the Model Y has been selling. Remember, it's the best performing, sold, highest sold vehicle last year of 2023. So what are we talking about now, people? But I'm going to let King Trump go in here and say what he has to say. We're going to clarify some things. And you know, Elon, I love Elon Musk. Do we love him? I love him. And I'm constantly talking about electric cars, but I don't mean I'm against, I'm totally for them, but whatever the market says, and if it's 10% of the market, 12%, 7%, 20%, whatever it is. Okay, give me some more market share though, Trump, right? We're talking about 50%, give us 50%, but okay, gotcha. It's okay, but you can't have 100% electric cars. And you know, so Elon endorsed me recently, the other day, actually. He's great. Elon Musk, he's a brilliant guy. Every time I call him, he's talking about, I got a new idea for a rocket. You have to hear this. <laughs> no, it's true. You know, the first time I ever saw this, I'm watching television like. So now he's about to talk about the rockets, right? SpaceX, okay, for you guys that don't know, he's going to be talking about SpaceX. Three years ago, and I see a rocket engine, motor engine, come down landing straight up in no wings no nothing and it's landing i thought i was seeing things what is that and it's landing on a barge in the middle of the ocean and then another one comes down and another one another one, i guess four of them came down three or four and they land upright i said what the hell was that i've never seen that before <laughs> now if that were government you wouldn't see that for another 50 to 100 years see facts if it was government, you guys would not see innovation like that. Okay, now government does do some innovation. So they created internet. They also created a 40 foot container. So shipping container, if you guys don't know what that is, Google it. So the government, it does okay, but private sector does the best job. See, y'all guys in the States in the rear with the gear, you're almost anti private sector, right? Against corporations. But a company like SpaceX, when you actually give it the room that it needs to grow and allow it to compete with other aerospace companies like Boeing or Raytheon, General Dynamics, like these companies did not make that type of innovation with rocket technology like SpaceX did. SpaceX came into the game and competed against those companies. And because they were a new startup company like SpaceX, they also incentivized the government through restructuring the way pay schedules happened. And so they were able to save the public money and also outcompete the juggernauts in the game. Private sector, we need them. But it was Elon. Now think of that. And I called him, and I've always had a good relationship with him, but I called him and I said, what was that? He said, well, we saved the engines. We saved the engines because it's very expensive to build. So, I mean, it didn't take me long to figure that if you save them, that's good, but who the hell thought you could do that? No wings, no nothing, just like these big, long, massive tubes, and they're landing gently right on the dot. I said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And you say, how long would it take government to come up with that one? I don't think they ever heard of it. Perhaps they still haven't heard of it, but you know, he's a very advanced person and he's doing other things that are great and so are other. We have to make, we have to make life good for our smart people. You know, we have some smart people. We have to make life good for our smart people. And he's, 
as smart as you get. And see, that's not hard to figure out, guys. You have to make it smart or make it easy for your smart people. That's it. That's all I'm saying. So if Elon is performing, creating these, you know, billion dollar, trillion dollar companies, and then also hundreds of billion dollar companies bringing factories back to America, whether it's in Nevada and Texas and providing new factories from lithium, uh, lithium ion refineries to factories for not only just cars, but also manufacturing batteries, not only batteries for the cars, but batteries for our energy grid. I mean, like at a certain point, that smart person, can he be given tax incentives? Can he be treated differently? Y'all like treating celebrities differently. Like, man, Kobe Bryant, he should never have to. Because he puts a ball in the net, or he did, and LeBron James and et cetera. But when it comes to one of our smartest people, like Elon, reusable rockets, advancing us in technology, it's like we got to give him the ninth degree. We got to burn him to the stake. Like, man, he should be treated like us. No, no, no. We got to make it easy for those people. Because if we don't incentivize them, then other countries will. That's simple, guys. If you never heard of FDI, look it up, foreign direct investment. Other countries are always attempting to siphon off your corporations and your smart intellectual entrepreneurs, investors. They're always begging. They're giving out citizenships from their, for their countries, residencies, visas, tax-friendly requirements, and ways of life where they could just move there and invest in those countries, and then that country will give them X, Y, and Z. See, they won't give them strife. They won't attempt to burn them at the stake. They wouldn't condemn them because they have done well for themselves economically. See, that's not what most of other countries do outside the conception of West. So we have to make it easy for those people that are proving themselves. But Elon endorsed me the other day, and I read, I didn't even know this, he didn't even tell me about it, but he gives me $45 million a month. A month. Not $45 million. Gives me $45 million a month. And I talked to him just a little while ago to say I was coming here, how you doing? And uh, he didn't even mention it. He didn't mention. I mean, other guys, they give you $2 and you got to take them to lunch. You got to wine them, dine them. <laughs> no, he's, he's a. And you got to wine them and dine them just because they gave him $2. <laughs> so let me read off, you know, what these normies think about when it comes down to the Elon and Trump relationship. Let me just clarify a couple of things. All right. First of all, former President Donald Trump has been vocal about his skepticism in his criticism of electric vehicles and the push for a green energy incentives. So the demands, the requirements, that's what he's being critical of or about. And he has often highlighted his support for traditional fossil fuels and questioned the feasibility or economic impact of transitioning to EVs. Well, that might be legitimate, but he's says, as you just saw, he's all for EVs. This stance contrasts with broader efforts to combat climate change and promote sustainable energy. Now, see, this is what normies like to do in the media. They're going to get you fighting over sustainable energy, which might not be a problem. Most people will agree that we need sustainable energy or secure energy, right? Boom. But climate change, that's, that's the level of conflict, right? Once we start bringing those words in, I drop that outright, because I'm not even worried about climate change. I'm more focused on promoting sustainable energy and then also energy security. And those are the things we need in our energy grid in the United States and the rest of the world is at high demand for. And that's something that if you say EVs don't supply, it's definitely something that mega pack batteries supply. And regarding Elon Musk, Trump has had a mixed relationship with him. On one hand, Trump has praised Musk for his entrepreneurial success, particularly with SpaceX. On the other hand, Trump's criticism of EVs indirectly targets Musk. See, that's an interpretation. 
That's not valid. It does not target must. And actually, it targets the mandate, but that mandate really doesn't benefit Tesla. It benefits other automakers that are still lagging behind. And as Tesla is a leading manufacturer of electric vehicles, despite this, Musk has generally maintained a good approach navigating both support and criticism from various political figures. And of course, as you guys know, he has fully un endorsed Trump, especially after the situation that happened with the assassination attempt. So if you want to support America and quote unquote, make America great again, and not even that, if you're just also on the left, I think that the most effective and efficient cars and the most safest cars for sure are Tesla's. It's once again, the best-selling vehicle, not EV, the best-selling vehicle in the world. Number three, Tesla brings jobs back to America. I say this many times. If you guys say you have so much loyalty, I don't know why you're still running with Ford, GM, and etc. These legacy automakers that have taken jobs overseas for the most part, and I'm not even hating on them for doing that. They did it for a reason. Okay, cool. And especially if they're still trying to break off a profit for themselves and not be in a hole. They want to be in a surplus. So I get it. I'm not really angry about that. I'm not one of those normies, the middle class that is, you know, irate about such things, outsourcing. But at the same time, Tesla's the one company that is bringing jobs back directly and indirectly. Not just with their cars, the mega fa factories also. So we got mega factories, we got giga factories, Nevada, California, the Fremont factory in California was a Toyota factory. That was abandoned. That was left by Toyota. And no disrespect to them. They just weren't making profits or they redirected the capital. Either way, I think Elon picked it up for a couple of M's. Now it's worth billions of dollars. So it was almost a distressed asset in California. Tesla came along and now it's a high performing asset. It's basically uplifted the entire area. Because, of course, you know, anybody selling a house in that area, it's like, oh, Tesla's factory is right around the corner in Fremont. So Fremont's winning just because of Tesla going into that same factory that Toyota was on. But Americans would rather choose Toyota. They have more loyalty to companies that shut down and move overseas. And they have zero loyalty to companies that bring jobs back because they don't want an EV or they don't like climate change or they think it's the left or whatever, the right, whatever their reason it is. It's like, you can't choose a company that chose America. It's a two-way street. This is why I say most of the time people blame corporations, but don't take accountability for any of their actions and behaviors. Okay, that corporation left. What's your problem now? You keep giving them the money. <laughs> so again, make Tesla great again or continue to make it great. Make Americans great again by you guys investing in companies that care about you. But as far as I'm concerned, hearing the words of Elon and Trump, they're cool. And also still shout outs to the Biden administration and also the Democrats. I don't pick sides. I'll just ride or die for Tesla. Everyone hates Tesla. Thank you for watching this one. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys can get the next video when it comes out. And I greatly appreciate you here for another installment. And peace out to the haters that hate on Tesla.